Time now is almost 8.15, and a new survey says 60% of all Americans do valet park their cars on a regular basis. We've all done it. What happens, though, when your car comes back damaged, missing personal items, or perhaps it's even stolen? Ever happened to you? Well, here with everything you need to know to protect yourself and your car is Fox 29's common sense lawyer, Sherry Olison. Well, we've all valet parked at one Absolutely. time or another. I mean, if it's for a wedding or, I mean, you're going out to dinner, it could right. be very... We've all done it. Okay, what responsibility do these people have, the well, valet parkers? Right, of course. Well, here's the thing, Roxanne. In the law, different people under different circumstances have different levels of responsibility. So the legal level for valet parkers is what's called reasonable care. So they have to exercise reasonable care when they're dealing with your car, when they're selecting their parking lot where they're going to park. It has to be safe and well lived. When they're dealing with your keys, when they're recruiting and training and supervising their people, all has to be a standard of reasonable care. If they don't, and there's a problem, then they may have liability. Now that's distinguished from if there's a problem and it's due to an independent third cause and they have used reasonable care. But here's the thing, average age valet parkers, 19 to 25. Average length of employment, two to three months. So you're dealing with kids who are new drivers, driving cars they're not familiar with, often without adjusting the seat or the, or the rear view mirror, often in tight spaces, and their business and the pace they have to work at picks up when the weather's bad. You wouldn't even give your own kids the keys to your car under those circumstances, and yet we give them to strangers. Well, okay then. You see the sign on the valet stand. What? I, I think I've seen the sign. I don't think I've ever read it. Right, right. What exactly well, does that say? Well, there's four buckets of sort of laws that govern valet parking relationships with us. One is the t the ticket stubs and those signs. The other is local and state ordin ordinances. But they're also governed by the contracts between the parties and the insurance policies. Because remember, we have separate owners sometimes between the valet service, the business you're going to visit, a hotel or a restaurant, and even the lot owner, and then you've got your own insurance policy, and, and here's something that most folks aren't aware of, if you're driving a rental car, you've got the terms of your mm -hmm. rental agreement, which usually prohibit you from letting other people drive the car, including valet parkers. Oh, that's an interesting little, that's fine print I really hadn't thought much about, but that's Most people too. don't, and that's when you're most likely to go to a restaurant or a hotel. Under 30 seconds, what do you do to protect yourself? Easy. Observe when you're going in, look at the lot, watch how the drivers are driving, Make sure they're securing your keys. Number two, secure your valuables before you get there. We get valet keys with our cars now. There's a reason it's called a valet key. Also, most valet parkers are good guys, but remember, they have access to your home address on papers you leave, your home key, your door opener, all those things. And last but not least, watch your car when you get it back, because once you drive off that lot, that fine print on the ticket stub says they're not responsible. We're toast. All right, Sherry, thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate the time and the info. Let's get over to Glenn now to look at the forecast. All right, thank you, Roxanne. Here we go. A look at live Viper Max.